Hello, my name is Jay from Bro Gaming, and you're watching Deck Garage. Hello, everyone. My name is Jay from Bro Gaming TCG, and today we are looking at one of the most interesting cards to come out of the new set, Burning Shadows, Alolan Muk GX. Now. A lot of people that I originally spoke to about this card repeatedly told me that getting special conditions out on Pokemon would not be worth the cost of the attack, which is one dark energy and two colorless energies. You'll need way too many Pokemon on the bench to ever make this deck work. Well, today I'm going to build the best Alolan Muk GX deck, and I'll prove to you that this does in fact work, and it works very well. Let's take a look at the Pokemon. First, we must remember that too many Pokemon can be a bad thing, but we need to be able to play Pokemon that can stack special conditions onto your opponent's Pokemon. So, we're going to be playing 4 Alolan Grimer from Burning Shadows, 3 Alolan Muk GX, and 1 Alolan Muk from Sun and Moon. Now, my choice for the for this line specifically are because we are playing a, why we are playing Alolan Grimer, so why not we play the Alolan Muck that shuts down basic Pokemon's abilities. This could definitely come in handy against decks that run Marshadow GX or Necrozma GX shutting down their abilities. And you say, well, Necrozma GX's ability isn't that, like, it isn't that strong. Well, you'll notice that we are playing one Drampa GX in this deck as a secondary attacker. And it's a good card to start out with when trying to get your bench set up to power up Alolan Muk's GX attack. The Krozma GX will easily shut this card down, not taking any damage from it at all, possibly making it a little bit harder. Shutting down that ability is always a good idea. Plus, Dark Ride GX will also, ability will also be shut down from Alolan Muk. So, after Drampa GX, we're playing a 2-2 line of Sandalit and Salazzle from Guardians Rising. This Pokemon's ability lets you poison and burn your opponent's active Pokemon upon evolving. This works great with Alolan Muk GX, making his first attack hit for a mighty 150 damage without a choice band. This is an easy 2-hit KO on any Pokemon, and if a Pokemon has 180 HP, it's an easy 1-hit KO after burn and poison damage has been taken out. Next and final Pokemon that we are running are two Tapu Leles. As you know, it's a really good uh, ability, and we are running quite a few supporter cards that possibly you are going to need in many situations. Tapu Lele can be an easy way to get those supporters out. It's a great card. You always want to be running at least one in your deck. We're running two in this deck. Alright, so moving on to trainer cards, we'll start with our item cards here. We're going to be playing 4 Ultra Balls. Being able to search out for your Pokemon is going to be key for this deck to perform well late game and mid game and even early game. Next up, we're playing 3 d Evolution Splay, and the reason for this is because of Salazzle. We will need to continually put on poison and burn counters on our opponent's Pokemon. And with the evolution spray, it'll be a lot easier to do that. You can also replace these with super scoop ups, but I prefer to play the evolution spray over super scoop up because of the corn flip perform when using super scoop up. Playing two blow field blowers to keep Garbotoxin from shutting us down is essential. And then we'll also be playing three choice band to help us out with powering up our attacks for better chances at one hit KOs. We're going to be finishing up our item line with two copies of Rescue Stretcher. Great card, always essential in decks because of how useful it can become, and then two nest balls just to make the deck more consistent. Remember guys, you can always switch up this deck however you like, everybody's playstyle is different. So those two nest balls might not be right for you, you might want to put in something different, you can always do that. After that, we're playing two copies of Po Town, and yes, this could hurt you in the long run against decks such as Alone the Night Tales and Kingdra, but with the Drampa being able to deal damage because of this stadium and the added damage to your opponent's Pokemon, Muk could possibly take some easy knockouts. So it's a good card to have in this deck. Now on to supports, which are going to be some pretty basic lines and pretty much standard as far as supports go. First, you're going to be running a full line of perf Professor Sycamore, so four there. A three line of N and a two line of Hala. Hala is there because of Alolan Muk's GX attack. It's a no cost attack and most likely will be used at the beginning of a match to gain control over the board. Next, we're going to be playing three Guzmo, which is based 
on your own style of gameplay and you could easily cut this down to two and add in another card somewhere else. Though, with my style of gameplay, I believe that Al Alolan Ninetales could become a problem for this deck and that's why I'm playing three. I'm also playing two Erase Arola, which allows me to pick up my Pokemon when I need to, such as Tapu Lele or Muck if he is damaged, as well as Salazzle if needed to. I'm also playing a single copy of Bridget in my deck. I feel that two will be a little too clunky and could be a waste of space in this deck, but playtesting will be required for my final deliberation on one copy of Bridget or two copies of Bridget. But for now, a single copy of Bridget will do. After that, we finish up our deck with eight Dark Energy and four of the wonderful DCE, making a grand total of 60 cards. Next, on to the portion of the show, which is honestly my favorite portion of the show, where I take a look at some of the top meta decks and, and talk about how they match up against the deck that we are profiling, which in this case would be Alolan Muck GX. First up, we're taking a look at Alolan Ninetales, a big contender on the meta list right now, with the newest addition to its deck being a plague to heavy GX decks. I feel as if this matchup could possibly prove to be the hardest for this deck, having to play around the new Alolan Ninetales ability is going to be a difficult task for even the most skilled of players, but it can be done. Keeping the non-GX form of Alolan Ninetales out of the active position is going to be your only hope, or... If it can't be helped, then hoping for burn and poison damage to add up will have to do. This deck could possibly be a very difficult matchup, or a very easy matchup, depending on how you play the game. An early start with Alolan Monk getting Salazzle down early and adding up that damage on its uh, Alolan Ninetales GX or on Alolan Vulpix could prove to be an easy win. But allowing Alolan Ninetales to get down on the field, it's non-GX form will prove to be very difficult for this heavy GX deck. Next up is Volcanion, and with new added fire type support, we can say this deck isn't going anywhere for a very long time and will most likely be at the top of the meta. Now, because of Volcanion's low HP, burn and poison damage can easily finish them off even without a choice ban. Now, for Turtonator, it's a its 190 HP won't be a problem either. This, The trouble with this deck is if it gets set up, it could spell out some major trouble for Alolan Muck. Heavy hitting Alolan Muck, 2k owing it, could be a problem. Other than that, it's a pretty good matchup. And one that you shouldn't be that you should be able to take the win on if you gain control of the game early on. Not too hard of a matchup for Alolan Muck. Volcanion will be an easy, easy win. So Galiciopod is the next deck we're taking a look at, and Galiciopod is something that is still yet to be determined in the meta. A lot of people are trying to figure out what to play with Galiciopod. You know, they've got the basic supporter line, they've got the basic item cards, and they've got the basic Pokemon line, but what is really going to make this deck good? Who knows? All I know is that this deck could definitely prove to be a huge contender against Alolan Muck GX. Now, I did make a profile on this deck a while back, and that link will be in the description if you want to check that video out. I encourage you to. It's a really great video. Anyways, because of this deck's mobility, it's going to be hard to keep uh, the special conditions on Galiciopod and the other Pokemon in the deck. Though Drampa could be the saving grace in this ma matchup. Galiciopod's attack can do some heavy damage, but with the right plays and the right amount of skill, you could uh, easily outplay them. Getting Potown down early is key in this matchup, putting early damage counters down, then after that using Drampa to easily pick them off might be the best strategy. This is going to be another tough matchup, but still one that could be pulled off. It's not an instant lose, but it's a close second. For our final matchup, we're going to have Gardevoir GX. Let's just say this is going to hit hard, and when it hits, it's most likely going to take the KO. Though, it's easy to shut down. Gardevoir is going to be slower than other decks, they are going to need their rare candies, and if they don't get those, then their deck falls apart because they have to take two extra turns to, you know, get Gardevoir GX out. So you got to take them down before they can get their rare candies out, before they can get their Gardevoir GXs out. Now, Potown is going to be is going to hit this deck pretty hard, going to put an easy 30 damage on him, even if they use rare candy. 
it's going to put 60 damage on it if they aren't using rare candy. Gardevoir GX only has 210 HP, making the uh, making them the poison and the burn plus the 150 damage will easily knock them out before they could even get a chance to attack. This matchup could easily go either way, 50-50. It really depends on who's going to get set up first, who is going to play faster, whose deck is more consistent, and who outplays the other. So that's kind of all I have for you guys today. If you guys would like to, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. It is very much appreciated. Also, while you're down there smashing that like button, you might as well go over and click that subscribe button. It is greatly appreciated. We appreciate every single subscriber we get, and we are growing exponentially on this channel, and we really do want to thank every single one of you guys for subscribing. Also, if you have any decks that you wish to be profiled, definitely leave that in the comment section below, as well as any suggestions you have for this deck profile. Uh, they are always greatly appreciated, and you know, different points of views can obviously bring out the best in a deck. So if you have any suggestions, please leave them in the comment section. Anyways, guys, this has been Jay from Pro Gaming TCG, and I want to remind you all to always keep on battling and pursue your dreams. Thanks for watching.